Hey there, and welcome to the Death to Vanilla podcast. I'm Steven Burkhart, the host of the show and the founder of Burkhart Creative Agency. If you're looking for fresh ideas and tactical advice on how to take your marketing to the next level, you have come to the right place. We interview industry professionals who teach us how to courageously create, boldly innovate and experiment, and they teach you to do the same. Now we are super grateful that you're here and watching, but if you're looking to get off your phone and have a little less screen time, we have an audio only version of the show, and we have links to that show in the description below. Without further ado, let's get into the show. I wanna cause no problems. I just wanna live my life, but I keep on hearing about nonsense. Me and my dons ain't mobsters, but you know when you see imposters. We know how to read them faces, same way you know how to read them comments. If you wanna talk, let's talk, but around here, make sure you're walking talk is constant well hey everybody welcome to another episode of the death to vanilla podcast where we just really discover what people are doing different in their industries to help them stand out so they get noticed and sort of get ignored uh because realistically that is the only two choices businesses have these days they either rise to the top and get noticed or they get completely ignored and i'll tell you what it is hard to make money when you're ignored um, so today I have someone really awesome on the podcast that I'm really excited to share, uh, have him share some of his stories and some of the, you know, actionable things that he has done throughout his career that you'll be able to take away, uh, from this podcast, be able to do yourself as well. And he has a, you know, a, a lot of personal branding stuff that we'll talk about and also an agency that he is doing a lot of work with as well. And so he's had to learn to stand out in multiple arenas. And so I'm excited to have him on the show. So Mish, if you could brag about yourself a little bit, I'd love for you to do that. Just give people an introduction, a little uh, recap on the last, what, 10 plus years of your career. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, obviously, thank you so much for having me on. Um, for those who don't know, uh, my name is Meech Golden. I'm originally from Washington, D.C., uh, currently living in uh, New Jersey, um, right across the, the water from New York City. So, um, But New Yorkers would not let me uh, get a pass for <laughs> claiming them anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so essentially, uh, I'm an Emmy-nominated producer as well as talent manager. Um, I've been in the industry for about 10 years now. Uh, moved here with a uh, $20 in a dream and uh, kind of scratch and claw my way, figuring things out. Uh, that led me to uh, a job over at Dev Jam, where I worked there for some time. I interned at a publicity firm as a publicity assistant. Um, got to work on a bunch of cool projects like Swiss Beats car launching. Um, he had another festival uh, that he did with the Cardi that was super huge that we were a part of. Um, super, super amazing experiences. Um, shortly after that, I ended up moving over to uh, doing road management actually. Um, Cause when I, first got, when I first got into the game, it was solely entertainment for me. Um, and uh, from there, I kind of uh, transitioned to uh, Smack Entertainment where uh, I got to work with the great Michael Strahan, you guys know him from Good Morning America, um, Constance Schwartz Marini, uh, my mentor. Um, love those guys to death. Uh, you know, they gave me an opportunity of a lifetime and I just grabbed the bull by the horns and, and kind of took advantage of it. And um, that led me to today uh, having my own agency called Good Gold Agency, where we uh, specialize in uh, talent, consulting and uh, content creation. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Man. So is so is this like pretty much like full service getting someone like out there in the world kind of agency situation or, or what? How what's the involvement there? Yeah, well, so. I try to tailor each each uh, client um, according or each client's needs according to what services that we offer them. Right. Um, one of the first things I do is I assess like, hey, like, are you looking for actual representation or are you just looking for the connections that I can offer as representation? Because that's what the consulting arm is for. Right. Like, I'm more than happy to make make introductions to the different agencies, the WMEs of the world, the CAAs of the world. Or if you want to meet with uh, production companies, I'm happy to you know set up meetings and generals and things of that nature for you as well. Uh, but it's really about understanding what your needs are. Um, and then once I assess those, then, you know, I know going in. Uh, what's the best approach for us to work together. Um, generally, like on the talent side of things, um, I like to, it's hard to say that I like to because I've only, had... Good Gold Agency just started in September. Um, I just mm -hmm. left Smack Entertainment uh, September 3rd, actually. Um, I guess you could say okay. I'm part of that, that great resignation. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, since leaving there, I, I've had a, 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 it's been a whirlwind um, because all of the uh, relationships that I have built, all of the uh, concepts that I built and uh, created over the years, uh, 
just started kind of swarming me, like, you know, out of nowhere. Like, you know, I, I didn't realize that these people wanted to work with me and wanted to figure out ways for us to work together. And so um, when, I, you know, my approach to talent has been if I don't, if I don't provide something that's additive to what you're doing, then it's probably not the best fit for us. And so that's kind of the start. And that's, that's sort of like the main pillar in our focus is like the talent representation side and like pretty much everything else extends from that, you know? Right. So for me, when I think of like the talent representation side and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I feel like that's starting to get into like the personal branding side of things, right? Where oh, one, one these thousand. people are bu building like their whole reputation uh, from the ground up, really. Uh, is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, at, at, in my previous experience, I had the opportunity to work with uh, lots of like retired athletes. Um, and a lot of those guys had a reputation um, in a specific industry, right? Be it the in, NFL, NBA, MLB, right? That's That was their thing. That's what they're known for. Um, and what we were able to do in working, um, you know, as their managers at, at the company was to really uh, build out their business development, you know, based on this platform that they had already built. For some of them, that could mean an entire kind of image change, right? Whether it's cleaning up, sharpening up a little bit, being a little bit edgier. Um, you know, there's a number of different ways that you go about that. And I think you have to tailor that to specifically to who the person is, what their needs are and what their goals are, I should say. Um, and we did that really, really effectively. So, you know, starting and starting my own agency, I kind of had to take a step back for a second, knowing that this was something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life and say, okay, well, I need to start utilizing the one skill set that I feel like separates me from every other marketing person, every other talent agent, every other producer out there. And that's just being a good person, right? Just being personable, right? I, I found that a lot of people just genuinely wanted to get to know me when I would be in a room, certain in certain situations, whether it be at Super Bowl, it could be at a dinner party, it could be, you know, like there were top level executives and CEOs that would gravitate to me. And I you know, I don't think anything of it at the time, you know what I mean? I'm just here to, you know, uh, I'm here for an appearance with my client or, you know, I'm, I'm here to do my job, so to speak. And, um, you know, when I took a step back and like really like internalized it, I said, oh, wow, I've been brand building this whole time so that now when I make that phone call, these people pick up and these people are interested not only in what I have to say, but what I have to offer. And it's, right. it's, it's been like the most like rewarding kind of, awakening experience that I've had professionally. Um, and I just now just take that and I'm applying that with all the knowledge that I currently have about, you know, working through working with talent um, to, 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 to the, the Google agency. You know, what's so freaking hilarious. And I'm so glad you said what you said just now, because it reminded me of something that I thought, thought was so funny when I was looking at some of your social media profiles, which is in your bio on your Instagram, one of your things is easy to work with. And I'm like, who puts that in their bio? Yep, 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 <laughs> and yep. I was like, so either you must be known for that or everyone else is just so hard to work with that saying that matters and so i don't know like I, I don't want you to like throw anyone under the bus but no, like it no. sounds like that was part of like your identity that you came to uh realize was a game changer for you that was actually making you stand out yeah um, absolutely. but i wonder if like in general if the industry just isn't full of a bunch of likable people in that space i don't know i mean it honestly it depends on who you talk to right um yeah. i have found that my experiences with people whom others may think are more of a challenge to work with have been have been pleasant and some vice versa you know uh but the one thing i always wanted to do when i walked into a room was be able to be fit to be able to fit in anywhere you i was needed right mm. um you know i like to think of myself as a swiss army knife right and so you know you open up that swiss army knife you got a screwdriver in there you got scissors you got pliers you got like wherever you need i don't need to be <clears throat> excuse me i don't need to be uh steph curry every night if you need me to be Draymond right. Green, I can be Draymond Green. If you need me to be Kamon Looney, I can be him. I could be the last guy on the bench that's patting everybody on the butt as you know they come back to the bench, and that creates a, a an, an agility, right? Um, that I think is super, super important in today's landscape. Things change on the fly, right? And um, you know, there's just certain technology and um, you know. Uh, 
even just uh, formulas to doing things that you're not always going to be first to bat or, you know, the first one to know and understand how to do this, right? But being able to uh, take a backseat and allow someone who does uh, to, to educate you and show you how to do those things, I think is what makes uh, a great talent manager. And I think that's also what makes a great marketer. Right. So doubling back to what you were talking about with the, the personal branding, I think what I'm really interested in hearing is your perspective on the process of building a personal brand, because most of the people that I talk to have built it for themselves, right? And if I'm being honest, that process is pretty emotionally driven, right? It's, it's hard to be very objective about yourself because you have like these parts of yourself that you downplay because you're not sure how cool they are. And then you have parts of yourself that you wish you were like, and are like aspiring to but aren't yet true. And then then you have like the real you, right? Yep. And so yep. it's a pretty emotional process that I think is genuinely hard to be objective about when doing it for yourself. So now that you've kind of been on doing it for yourself and also doing it for others, where do you feel like people misalign when it comes to their personal branding? Like, are they usually too optimistic about themselves? Do they not brag about themselves enough? Like how, how have you seen it now that you've been like on the tactical side and mm -hmm. the emotional side? I think you hit it on the head um, when you said that people separate themselves into these different silos, right? You have like the, this is, the, this is me that I want to be public facing, right? This is me on social media. This is the real me when I'm with my family. And like in reality, like it should be one person and you need to be that person at all times. Now, the way in which you communicate with people, yes, that's going to slightly change. Um, and when I, when, when I say that, I mean, if I'm out with my family having dinner as a, as a celebrity talent, right? I'm out with my family having dinner. I might not do the same that I always do on my TV show, right? I'm out, I'm out having dinner. But like a, as, a, as a fan, you should understand that. You should respect that. Um, I think yeah. that the biggest issue is that authenticity factor. Um, we're in a, I'm not sure if I can curse, but I can't think of any other word. We're in a, we're in a people see through the BS, right? Like yeah. people literally see through the BS. And if you are not giving them something that's authentic, it's not going to uh, push through. It just, it just, it just honestly, it won't. And um, that's the part that I have found has helped me to be the most successful. And I push every single client I've ever worked with to do the same. And I, I honestly, I can say at a, at a point in time, I didn't, I didn't realize that I was doing that. Um, and then I started working with, uh, I got the opportunity. I was Deion Sanders day to day for four and a half years. And to watch this man turn it off and on. And when I say turn it off and on, like he understood and knew every time he stepped in front of a group of people for an appearance, the camera came on that they were expecting a certain something, you know, a, mm. you know, a certain, you know, they were expecting something yeah. and he gave them that. And when that red light went off, he was able to kind of turn that down, turn it off. But in all, in all actuality, he was still the same person. Him and I still communicated the same way. He would still tell, tell the same stories. It may not just, it, just, it may not be as uh, <laughs> uh, pronounced <laughs> as, sure. as, as when he's on TV. Um, but that taught me a really, really valuable lesson in um, just being authentic and, 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 and giving people the opportunity to, to know the real you. Uh, and remembering that, you know, regardless of what your job is, you're still a, a human being, you're still a person. And the things that you do in your personal life really, true, really and truly affect the things that you do professionally. So, sure. So then I, I guess my, my question for you is, and just making a, a, a case or a devil's advocate, if you will. Absolutely. Um, how do you answer the question is like, how do I be fully authentic, which by the way, is something I saw on your website multiple times is yeah. authenticity. So that's really cool. Yeah. Um, but how do you bridge that with like, not being like when you talk about, Oh, like they need to like clean up a little bit, or they need to be a little bit more edgy or stuff like that. How do you, how do you marry those two things together where that is both authentic, but also making those tweaks in the presentation that is going to make them maybe more marketable or entertaining or what have you? Like, how do you bridge that gap? Well, to me, those tweaks are only made if the client wants it. That, 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 that's, that's my approach, right? Okay. My, my approach to that is, 
we're only making those tweaks if if you are truly invested in this like we lay out the strategy this is our plan this is where you want to go this is where you want to end up right this is where where you want to be when we look at that we say okay we need to do this 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 and this right and if one of those things are making tweaks to let's just say your your appearance right um it could be something as simple as like to appear a little younger right like that yeah. that's something that can come down from your you know from from your the higher ups at, at whatever whatever job they're saying hey we just want you to look a little younger would you mind shaving the beard off whatever the case is like if that's not something you're willing to commit to and do then we need to change strategy because hmm. there you won't be being authentic right like you won't be yeah. like people will see through the fact that you're not happy with your facial you know your, the way your face looks um without a beard or you know just little things you may have yeah. raised there's so many other like little factors I'm sure that you could think of that go into that. But that's kind of, again, that that's why to me, it always comes back to like, what are the client's needs? And like, if you tell me you want something and this is a step that's required to do that. And I, and, you know, I, I lay it out for you and you, you're not willing to do that. then do you really want that? Um, and, you know, I also am a big, big proponent of like diversion thinking as opposed to conversion thinking. You know, I want to think of like, every single possible way that we can get something done as opposed to thinking the one simple best way to get things done. Because when you have all, you know, and I think most, I think most marketers, right, in general, and, and I think it, it's, it's, it, it shouldn't be this way, but I think most people in general try to think of the single best way to get something done, right? Whether it is a campaign that they're trying to figure out, push, you know, pushing, um, you know, a new product uh, or an upgrade to a product, whatever that case is, um, and, you know, you, you get the group of people sitting in a room and everybody throws out an idea and immediately let's just say, you know, somebody throws out an idea, you immediately shut it down because it doesn't fit into this little square that we have to yeah. abide by, as opposed to asking all of the questions around why this could work, right? Which could actually lead you to the answer a lot faster than figuring out, than, you know, uh, chopping down someone's idea immediately as soon as they say it in a room and, um, you know, I've been fortunate to work with a lot of people that um, are what I consider divergent thinkers. And, you know, uh, I'm really, really grateful for that because that has allowed me to, again, work really, really well collaboratively, really, really well in teams, which I also think is important. Like there's not one single person with all the answers and you got to right. be smart enough to, 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 to know that. And so, you know, I listen to my clients just as much as I expect them to listen to me. Like, you know, you much better than me. I should be like second to your wife or your, <laughs> or, or your husband, right. but you know what I mean? Like, but you know you better than me. So if you know that this isn't something to, you know, to kind of circle back, if you know that this is not something that you're going to be willing to do, then your, your, your fans are going to know it too. And we won't even have to tell them they'll see it. Yeah. It's crazy. Like how subconsciously that's communicated, like yeah. so intensely. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like you can, you can be at a, a party, you know, with your significant other and you can sense if somebody is not really feeling you, you may have not even spoken to that person yet, but you can just sense it. And it, right. I think that, that that's a natural, like human connection is like kind of avatarish, right. In the sense that we're all like connected. Right. And um, it, it, it's the same in business, you know? And I think that, you know, if, if, if brands that want to work with celebrity talent, really took the time to uh, do their homework on the talent that they decided they want to work with, as opposed to just thinking, oh, this is a cool name. We want to tap into his audience. He has 10 million followers. She has 10 million followers. Let's work with him. Then you probably see a lot less people getting brand partnerships and strategic partnerships and endorsement deals. Because think about it, uh, a player gets drafted, right? To, to, or a player is going to get drafted into one of the professional sports um, leagues that professional team goes and talks to his high school coach they go and talk to his mom they go and talk to the 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 store manager at the best buy that he worked at they go and talk to his college coach and they do all that before making a decision of whether or not to keep them on the draft board or take him off yet a brand and i'm not going to mention any brands because i might work with them one day but <laughs> but Fair. you know a brand could come in and say oh this guy Mark Twain is, oh, he, he's, he's amazing. He's amazing. Like, look, he has 30 million followers. Like, that'd be perfect for us. If we can just get a, a percent, if we get him to tweet this out, that we should get these, uh, we should hit these KPIs and get this conversion rate. And it's like, right. you, have, you know nothing about Mark Twain, right? Mark Twain could be involved in some very 
shady behavior, right? Um, he can have said some things that could come to light soon. Like, you know, it, there's just not enough uh, uh, research and, and, and real development uh, of, of a relationship between the brands and the, the talent. And sometimes the talent is super busy and they don't want to spend the time on the phone with the brand execs. And look, I mean, I wouldn't person as a brand, if, if I own the brand, I wouldn't want to spend time with some, I, mean, I wouldn't want to spend money on somebody if they weren't willing to spend time with me, right? To get to know yeah. me and understand me. And I think that that's, a, that's something I'm really, really, really trying to push for this year. Um, and, and just, you know, when I say this year, I mean, because my, 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 my agency is so new, um, I'd really like to work with the brands that I feel like I have a personal connection to, right? Some like the, like I, I I stand by their messaging. I stand by what they, uh, you know, uh, their the, the way people other people perceive them, you know, uh, yeah. as well, you know. So those those are like little things that are important to me. And you know, I, I've gotten flack for that for sure, for sure, because you know, business can be a little cutthroat, right? And, yeah. you know, when, when you lead, when, when you lead with your heart, and your morals, sometimes you tend to, th those people are, it's said anyway, that those people tend to be less successful. Um, but I just, I don't find that. Like, I, I find that when you, when you do write by people and you make good decisions, um, you don't need to work with people who think the opposite. You can continue to work with the people who um, are like-minded and, uh, it poses a great opportunity for success. Yeah. Well, and I, I'd venture to say that if you're leading with your heart and your morals, your version of success might be just slightly different than theirs. <laughs> oh, I, I, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, and don't get me wrong. The, the, the bottom line is we all want to make money, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. We all want to make money. And, um, but I just think that there's, you, you have to draw the line in the sand somewhere, right? Um, right. All of those people go to the same therapist that we go to. They just they just have to pay a higher <laughs> a higher fee to, to go visit there. So you know, obviously, money is not the end all be all, um, and uh, happiness, whatever for whatever happiness means to you is, um, and I think that that's what we should be striving for. Like I am committed, my life's work is to be of service to others. Right? We got off this this uh, podcast right now, and you asked me, hey, I'm just wondering, would you mind helping me? Absolutely. Because I know at the end of the day, you wouldn't have asked me if you absolutely didn't need it. And if I can do right. that for you, that fills my cup, you know? And it just as much as hell helping you probably like takes a load off of, you, off of your back, like that fills my cup knowing that I was able to be there for you in whatever way you needed me for. So yeah, man, trying to live a life That's of service. Funny. It's challenging, but yeah. we, we gonna get through it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, shoot, that's, that's good stuff. Um... You so yeah, so I guess in comment to one of the things you said a little earlier of just like the the you know the Mark Twain example you gave, it's like I feel like that just goes back to that whole mindset that I, I've I've talked about in, in previous content where it's like um people are always looking for that silver bullet and it just don't exist. You know what I mean? Like people are looking to hire Mike Twain because they think um that they're gonna spend x amount of dollars and reach a certain amount of people and get us get some quick attention or quick money or or yep. whatever you whatever it is that they're looking to get out of that specific relationship or i guess lack of relationship if, you know um and this is because there's some some ideology there of a silver bullet that that somehow is going to just like solve a problem immediately and some things can be solved pretty quickly uh, yep. But that would be a perfect example of just like a silver bullet thing, because clearly there's no relationship that's getting built there. Because if there was a relationship that wanted to be built there, you'd be doing some of those other things you mentioned, like the research of making sure the values line up and stuff like that. And I don't know, I that's, yeah, you know, yeah. You, you're not going to like, date someone and then not know anything about them ever. You yeah, know, that'd be that's weird. It. And that I mean, isn't is I mean, and most of these things, most of these deals that get done, they're like, they're literally like dates, you know, like, you reach out to me via social media, uh, you know, whatever, Hinge, Tinder, whatever. I like, right. oh, I like back, you know, I swipe and we get to we start communicating. We say, oh, okay, well, this is how we could do this. We can go here together. Oh, okay, that would be cool. We, we end up going there, but like there was a whole process in between us going there that we were getting to know each other and you were finding out things about me. I was finding out things about you, making sure that those things aligned and it was more than just uh, a money thing in my because in my personal opinion like I don't think any celebrity 
is bigger than the brand. And if the brand is going into it thinking that, then they've already, they already forgotten their why. And that's probably going to be, that's pro- I mean, they're setting themselves up a failure, right? You know what I mean? You should know why you picked this celebrity to do this because you know why you're trying to sell this product or trying to sell this service to begin with, right? And so you, that, you know, aligning yourself with this celebrity should be adding some type of value, right? Um, where uh, you can uh, reach new markets, you can get closer to, you know, your target audience. And, and you know, to be honest, you can kind of still a little bit of that celebrity thunder um, and, sure. and have them help you activate, you know, their base. So, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I saw you work, you worked with uh, uh, Beats by Dre. And I mean, that's like the, the, some of the very first commercials he had was other celebrities wearing his headphones. Cause it's like, how else are you going to make a hole in the headphone department? Oh, did you, you see? Know what I mean, are uh, you kidding me? Like, uh, this, how else are you going to do it? Did you see that documentary? Uh, it was on HBO Max. Um, I don't have HBO uh, Max, so probably not. Oh, man. Uh, what was it called? It, it, it was about Dre and, oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kill me that I can't remember the name of it right now. But there was a documentary um, that was on HBO Max, and they kind of talked about Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre and, 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 and just their contributions to hip hop and, and to, to me mm-hmm. as a whole. And one of the things they talked about was how Jimmy Iovine product placement was like insane for beats when they were starting out. He literally put it in every single one of his artist music videos, whether they were wearing it. Uh, it was just, you know, sitting there with playing, playing the actual song from the record and it, it exploded. You know, I mean, I, I, n- I never imagined seeing such a company, seeing a company as big as Beats was to me, be acquired by an Apple. You know what I mean? Like that to me was 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 kind of revolutionary in a sense of like Beats could have very well continued on the, down their own path, and they they I mean I'm I'm willing to bet that if they continue to invest in music and musicians and artists, that it would be probably one of the second biggest if not the biggest, uh, you know, electronics companies in the world. It, everywhere you go, people are listening to music, whether it's Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, like music, oh, yeah. music moves is the, is the soundtrack to, to, to our, our living, you know, as people. So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting that you brought that example up, man. That's a, that's a good one. Well, I mean, that's like, yeah, it's just like that. I mean, to your, to your point, you know, that was, you know, that taking that celebrity clout, and, and putting it towards a bland, brand is like literally how it happened. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious because you made a comment. You said that brands should not forget that the celebrities aren't bigger than them. Yeah. And I, I wanted you to kind of clarify what that means a little bit because part of me is like, yeah, Kim Kardashian makes more money than some businesses do. Yeah. And so in a lot of ways, she is bigger, but I'm assuming you're not talking about like following or something like that. What do you, what exactly do you mean by that? I mean, so like if we if we were to watch a commercial right now and that that specific, you know, ad focused too much on the celebrity and not the actual mm-hmm. product that it was selling, like the brand recognition is not really there. There's no real ad recall, okay. right? We're thinking about the celebrity, right? We're not tying the celebrity to using the brand. We're just saying that, oh, I saw Kim Kardashian in this commercial. And that that, that was a funny you know, that was a funny commercial, like mo- even like most of the Super Bowl commercials, right? While in theory, I, I love them. I think that they're hilarious. Um, I think sometimes the actual product itself can get lost in, in them if, they, if they're not uh, clever enough in that messaging. And that, that kind of, the, 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 the point, the, the, the idea of me being able to utilize the skills that I picked up as a producer in storytelling, mm-hmm. narrative, and apply that to marketing, whether it be in campaigns or advertising or advertisement has been like, probably like, it's like unlocking Pandora's box. Like it just opens up a wealth of information. Content is king, right? If you, if you are able to produce high quality content um, and, and get the messaging across, um, you're, you're golden. So that's, that's sort of what I meant in that regard. Right, no, that makes sense. I mean, it's funny that because like earlier you mentioned you you say content is king, and then earlier you mentioned you were talking about how you yourself, like only want to really work with brands who believe in what you believe. And it's funny because uh, I was literally creating some content today, and I was sitting there thinking like, how else 
would anyone know what your brand stood for if you're not making content talking about what you believe? Like, how else are they going to know? Yeah. Like, that's part of the storytelling of the platform uh, is is being able to do that so that you actually do connect with the right people because you've you put that out there. Yep. You know, your Absolutely. vibe attracts your tribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, and and I just I do want to clarify one thing. It Yeah. I am I am 100% open to working with people who don't necessarily believe in the same thing I believe, right? Sure. Um but well, I was I meaning think, more like you personally with like as a consumer. Oh, copy. Okay, so absolutely. I, I didn't want yes, to pigeonhole yeah. you too yeah, much. Got no, you, no, got no, you. No, no. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. I didn't, I didn't mean you would only work with people who believe yeah. in that. No, it's more like as a consumer, like that's, Tim, that's Tim pretty Cook, normal. Tim Cook you know looking I mean? at this right now, like Meech, scratch up. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, no, no. Reverse. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Like you as a consumer, like you, you're yeah. wanting to connect with brands that uh, uh, mirror your values in some way. Maybe yeah, not all in of some them. Way. Some right, exactly. And, but at and least you know some... what those are eventually over time by the content that you see from that brand. Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. So, so you're, you know, you're in two very competitive spaces because you're in inter entertainment and you're also right next to, but not a part of New York city. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, you probably work actually in New York, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So you're driving across those bridges every day. Every um, day. <laughs> but um, so, so you're in very competitive environments and I'm sure people like you said like even your beginning you said you were just like you know like clawing to like you know make it you know whatever that means for each person listening but um what were like some like do you have like some big takeaways of like things that really made the difference like where what things did you started doing that really gained you the traction was it just relationship building or were there ways that you positioned yourself as like a personal brand that really started gaining traction for you yeah, man. Uh, I mean, and you kind of brought it up earlier and I hate to circle back to it because it sounds so cheesy, but it's it's literally in being easy to work with and happy to be there. You know, um, Eve Insler um, has a, uh, a play um, and it's called Any One of Us. And I remember it because a friend of mine introduced it to me years and years ago. And it, that just stuck out. Like it was a bunch of stories about different women and, and, and they were reading these... Um, uh, sort of like memoirs uh, uh, about their lives, and and you know as they were reading, you you kind of just put yourself in that in that space, right? And so to like make this conversation a little less morbid, like that's what I started doing when I got here to New York. I I stopped feeling sorry for myself, and I said, okay, you know what? Just as easy as that person's there, I can be there too. And the only thing that I need to do is just be happy with where I'm at, be happy with where I'm at, and do the best that because because when you're happy, you're doing the best that you can right? You're trying hard and people start to take notice. And I already knew that I was good with building relationships um, and, and networking with people like that. That just comes natural because I just genuinely, like I talk to, I, somebody gets in the elevator and we're going to the hundred something floor. I'll be damned if I'm going to stand there the whole time and not say hello to you, figure out how your day was. Like, that's just who I am. You know, I can't help it. Yeah. I talk to my, my servers when they tell me their name, I, you know, I ask them, Hey, are you from here? Like, you know, like, that's just who I am. My friends, they laugh. They say, you can talk to a doorknob. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. If that door, if it can speak back to me, I can communicate with you. <laughs> and so, and so, yeah, that, that's, I just, I just, honestly, I, I knew early on some of what I was good at and some of what I was strong at. And I really made a concerted effort to, um, and building my personal brand to show people those things in as little time as possible, right? And the only way to do that was to be easy to work with, happy to be there. Because all I was doing was right. working when I first got here. I mean, whether it was leaving a job to go to an internship to bartend that night, like, you know, what, whatever it took, I was willing to do and I was willing to go out of the way to do that. And so I would, you know, if I was giving advice to someone, um, I would, I would just tell them to figure out the things about yourself that are your best qualities and make sure that every single time you get the opportunity um, you, to, to meet somebody, whether, it's, whether you think they're in your industry or not, you're, you're showing people that. You know, you're showing people those qualities. You give people the opportunity to see those qualities um, because that's, that's ultimately what's going to separate you because no matter, you know, um, my mentor, um, Keith White, um, he 
told me a quote one day. He said, you know, if you think you're one in a million in New York, you're not. There's seven other people just like you. And I didn't get it at first. I was just kind of looking at him like, what? There's 8 million people in New York. So that means that automatically there's seven other people that are just like me, right? So what is it about me that, that stands out in the room? And that same sort of concept applies to what, what we do now in business, you know what I mean? And I don't try to be anything other than myself. You know, I know that there are a ton of other um, brilliant uh, creative strategists and, you know, marketing people, marketing executives and CMOs and all sorts. And they probably have a wealth of information um, that I may or may not know uh, or, or even experience. Um, the one thing that I pride myself in is being able to stand by the work that I've done um, and, you know, having the people that I work with um, be able to vouch for um, not only my role within that, but, uh, you know, my work ethic. And uh, yeah, man, that's, uh, the proof is in the pudding, man. You know, you, you, you can't, you can't take away what's written in stone. So <laughs> true. So, so just super tactically, I, I, yeah. I love what you're saying. Like, um, what I would love to hear is for, uh, to help me and, and people listening, connect the dots a little bit on, um, how, like in photos and videos, how are you, I guess out of like the interpersonal communication stuff, like in yeah. real life that you're doing, mm -hmm. how are you demonstrating those qualities of authenticity, uh, easy to work with and stuff like that? Like, how do you communicate that in a photo? How do you communicate that in a video like you personally? Yeah. So it's, that's an interesting question because, um, I was actually, I think I was overthinking it for a while and I was having trouble as I started a uh, good old agency in, figured out how I wanted to convey that. And so what I did was I brought on a creative strategist, right? And when I sat down with the creative strategist, uh, you know, him and I talked um, about me personally and what I wanted people to see as they were looking in on my brand, which were the things that you mentioned. Um, and that's when we came up with a pretty much a, a, a strategy that allowed me to, so I have a three-part series that's coming out. Um, and the three, the first one is easy to work with. The second one is happy to be here. And the third one is based solely on my clients. Right. Um, okay. and it, it's going to, I don't want to give too much away, but, um, but, but, but I, 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 you got the, you got the first nugget of that. So, but, um, <laughs> yeah. that through, through, through that series, um, and, and they're all like five minutes, they're really, really short. Um, through that series, mm -hmm. I'm kind of talking about, uh, my story and how I ended up getting to where I am today. and you know, along the way, I'm showing the different ways in which um, I, you know, I've been easy to work with, right? I'm showing people in my everyday life, uh, you know, experiencing things that, you know, they've needed me for, like, you know, there's been like random moments that I've had caught on camera and things of that nature that people will get oh. to see. Yeah, that people will get to see. It's very docu-series like, but, um, you know, that was my way of being able to convey that to people, um, especially because most people, that I've worked with in the past have known me to work with different agencies that I've worked with over the course of my career. So that was super important to me to give people like the visual um, um, of that. So that is coming soon um, as well as a, a clean wipe of all the socials and everything like that. So um, I'm super excited and stoked to, to get this underway and to get this off the ground. Uh, I think it's been a long time coming. Um, you know, I was very blessed in that um, I was able to sign Four clients. I have four clients now, and I was able to sign one of them within like two weeks of me um, starting my own agency. So nice. um, I kind of had to hit the ground running uh, with him, um, and uh, it's been it's been great. You know, um, the work has been solid, and you know uh, we, we have some really really big deals. And you know, it's interesting with him. His name's Brian Danielson. He's a AEW professional wrestler. Um, and you know, what's interesting with him is that he's very different from a lot of the other clients I've worked with in the past. Um, in that um, you know, what makes sense for, you know, I could reach out to a Pepsi or Lay's or Visa, right. And, you know, easily, you know, see what, you know, what they're working on and see how he can fit into that space. Right. But, uh, he is an environmentalist and that is something that I really knew nothing about. Um, you know, outside of, you know, wanting to, I, I have to have a house, so I have to recycle and things that, nature, you know, just yeah. the regular stuff that we, you know, most people understand about sustainability. Right. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, work in working with somebody who considers themselves an environmentalist, I think it's important for me to 
like get as much information as I possibly can on this so that I know yeah. what brands to approach them with, with opportunities and which ones not. And then also which ones for me to, to take the opportunity to go and pitch, right? And so um, just learning like what B Corps were, right? Was just like, whoa, mind blowing, you know? Um, and, you know, we're already in the midst of like conversations with a huge, huge water company um, that focuses on um, um, water recycle um, and, uh, and reuse uh, for like major, uh buildings and 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 uh you know uh sports arenas and things of that nature so um yeah like things like that come about and 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 if i didn't take the time to like tailor my uh my sort of approach and and the strategy with brian i could have very easily found myself bringing him a bunch of opportunities that really didn't make sense for his brand it really didn't make sense right. for going so um yeah man um it, uh, i know i kind of went off on a tangent there so but <laughs> no that, i mean that's that's part of like how you express your authenticity yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it was on brand <laughs> <laughs> so so you you, you kind of talked about it with that example a little bit but you know we kind of talked about tactically how that worked with your personal brand but how does that work with a, a business brand like you 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 know uh you know, it's easy when it's like your own personality traits, but yeah. when that ends up becoming a business that I feel like that's a little bit different, um, unless you've gone through the process of like giving like your brand, a personality, if you will, not your personal one, but the business, the corporate side. Um, so how do you, how do you start communicating that on the corporate end? Um, I think, it, I think it starts with like building credibility in the space already. And so, you know, if I am, you know, uh, if, 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 if I know that I ultimately want to engage and you, are you, are you, let me make sure I understand this correctly. Are you asking me from the perspective of me being like the, on the corporate side as the agency, like how, I'm, how I would, you know, try to, okay, got it, got it. Well, that, and just because you've been a part of corporations for a long, long time. So you right, see right. them like how they market themselves. And so I'd love to get some of that past experience of like, oh, like, you know, you know, different, you know, places you work with, how did they market themselves? How do, how have you seen that work? And how is that different maybe than personal branding? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of, it's twofold, because where some companies take the approach of just utilizing like the public relations uh, route of, you know, having a PR kind of hitting the podcast circuit or the radio circuit or, you know, getting write-ups and publications. Um, I think that at least at, during my time at a lot of my previous companies, we kind of focused more on the work that we were doing um, and let people talk and say what they wanted to say, um, which was more effective for us because we were small but we were able to get, we, we had so much output because we spent less time worrying about what others thought about us and focused more on the work. So that has kind of been ingrained into my working, my, my professional DNA. Um, but I would say that, you know, from looking at on the outside in at some of the brands that we work with or that, you know, I admire, um, I think one of the things that they did was, uh, again, like just build that credibility with, uh, you know, their, their, uh, their consumers, right? Um, they made sure that um, whatever their whatever their product was, they could stand by it. Whatever their service was, they they you know it would hold up in a room with whatever statements or messaging that they were making about it in the public. Uh, and I think that that's what that's one of the things that would help those types of brands stand out. Um, you know, something like when you know my time at Dev Jam, Dev Jam is so iconic, right? That like. You, it, it, it almost went without saying that when I worked at Def Jam, there was like a certain sort of, uh, oh, you're like big time. And it was like, wow, that's kind of crazy that you associate this, you know, me working at this brand, not knowing what position I hold with, with such esteem and such regard, you know, yeah. um, and when in reality, I could just be, uh, you know, and no, no, no disrespect, but I could just be, uh, you know, a, a custodial worker or, you know, just a regular office yeah. assistant and, you know, not have any, uh, you know, cachet whatsoever. But, um, yeah, I think that the one thing that I would say, uh, you know, has really benefited me and the companies that I work with is that we really took pride more in just allowing the work to speak for itself um, and not mm -hmm. getting caught up in uh, what others were saying, uh, saying around you and about you, 
um, and taking advantage of the opportunity when you did get to speak to say something that, um, you know, always made people understand that you were open for business and not only were you open for business, you were ready to put in the work to, to, to get to, to get to that, uh, that next level whatever, and whatever it is, whatever capacity. Right. No, that's awesome. Yeah. I think that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Like when I'm thinking about, you know, what would someone's feed look like or whatever else, then it's like having that balance between having those authentic communications of, you know, who you are and what you believe in, but then also balancing that with like, here's the work that I've made and it's good. And so, you know, if, if both of those things look pretty awesome, then chances are you're going to have someone who's excited to work with you yeah. um, as and, opposed to trying to convince them of something. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess that's kind of also the long approach, right? Is that you're, you know, if you're going to like completely cold outreach, then there's no context as opposed to um, when you, you, you built an audience over time, whether that's interpersonal or whether that's online, then you have a chance to be able to like start building that trust and that um, connection with people that, as long as you're using that intentionally is kind of what I'm getting. Yeah. 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 And, and look, man, I will, I mean, I'll be the first to tell you, man, I, the biggest mistake that I've probably made in my career is not focusing enough on my personal brand as I was helping others build theirs. You know, you, you go across my social media right now, my personal page, and you'll see a bunch of pictures of me, like, you know, in various different settings, you know, out occasionally standing in front of a car. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> you know, occasionally, okay, occasionally, you know, um, taking the opportunity to, you know, share something about, uh, you know, one of my accomplishments or something that I was a part of, whether it's production or a deal or something like that. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of that was because it was, it's really a re it's really just a release from having so much pressure on you to create, I don't wanna say that. Uh, I think it's really more or less just a, a release of being able to not be, uh, not feel like anybody is critiquing the way you live your life as opposed to the, you know, compared to the work that you're doing, you know? I yeah. know that a lot of times I get into certain rooms with people and, you know, they don't dress like me, they don't talk like me. And, you know, I know that by the time we finish the conversation, I completely changed their perception of what they, of who they thought that I was. And I, I, I take a lot of pride in that. I take a lot of pride in it. And I just wish that uh, I had done that. And I'm taking the opportunity now that I recognize it to spend a lot more time, um, like I said, which is why you'll see this docu-series coming out. Um, and I'll make sure that I, you know, I shoot it over to you and um, anybody in the audience, yeah, anybody in the audience that's listening, uh, would love your thoughts and feedback. Uh, and I look forward to it, man. Um, it's it's definitely a new, it's a new kind of chapter for me, just being a little bit more vocal about, hey, these are the things that I've done. This is why I feel like um, I should have a voice in this space, um, and I really want to contribute to the to the space in a really meaningful way, um, and a meaningful and thoughtful way. Um, and the proof, you know, again, the proof is in the pudding. You can take a look at my resume. You can see the people I'm working with, I've worked with, and know that, um, you know, I, I really care about this stuff. And I, I, uh, I enjoy, I truly, truly enjoy uh, taking something from obscurity and bringing it into to, to the spotlight. So, Right. No, I think that's so good. I mean, I think for one, what's encouraging, and I hope that you're excited about, is just this idea that... Um, you're kind of doing things in the right order, which is that you've done something and now you're talking about it as opposed to what a lot of us are doing, which is like building while talking about it. Like we're kind of more documenting the journey as we go, which you're going to be doing with uh, good goal, obviously. Um, the The agency itself is, is newer, but your experience as being the head of it is not, right. but even still, you're still going to be kind of a lot of ways documenting the journey of building that, but then also talking about the past, which is exciting because you've already accomplished a lot. And, um, and so I think that's exciting because that's a much more powerful position to be in. But I love what you also said too about it, because I've always felt like people put a lot of pressure on themselves, to like figure it all out right away. But really, um, your marketing really can only be as good as your um, 
like self-discovery is and it just takes time to figure that out like it took you a long time to yeah. figure out that like being easy to work with was something that became you became consciously aware of and then also became a part of your strategy like that just took time like and you 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 can't always hurry that up yep you know it just it, it takes as long as it needs to take and then it, so it that <laughs> then over a period of time your marketing gets better and better and better and like you, you're able to really hone in on those things and so that's exciting to hear that you've been on that journey uh despite all the amazing things you've accomplished right is that there was still more to discover and learn and now it's going to put you in an even more powerful position because you're able to actually talk about those things with intention which i think is amazing so that's super exciting and Absolutely. I think it provides a pretty hopeful future. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. And I, and I, yeah, man. I mean, I'm, I'm very excited about the journey that I'm on right now. And, uh, you know, I, I get to meet so many cool people along the way. Um, so many people to learn from and uh, so many experiences to take from that to, you know, better equip you for, you know, the future and whatever that holds. I mean, just look at like this, this, I mean, and I'm sure you're experiencing it right now. Just look at the crypto space, right? With NFTs and things. I mean, Nike just came out with Nike Land, which is now going to be featured on Roblox, which is a whole entire digital world. Uh, you know, and for me as like a sneakerhead, like that's incredible, right? And that's Nike being at a step ahead, right? Being ahead of the curve and understanding and realizing that in this digital universe, right, people are going to start interacting in there. And why not get a leg up on understanding how people are going to want to to, 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 to communicate and conversate on there and, and engage on there and better uh, meet the supply or the demand from your, your, you know, your consumers. So, you know, it's just stuff like that, that, you know, uh, I want to continue to be on the cusp of, um, create and develop, uh, like you said, document. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, man. That's exciting. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what, I am personally very jealous of your, uh, your personality type of being able to talk to everyone because when you're you tell me about that example in the elevator, I'm like I would have 100 not be saying anything the whole time. Really? That's I, I can't. I honestly I I don't believe you. Like you are so personable. Even like we, I mean we jumped right into this conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like I can continue talking to you forever. Like you know it's it's I just wouldn't get that from your personality. Like you just don't really? see. Yeah, not at all. I don't know. I think. I don't know. I don't know what my deal is. I just, I, it's, it's like one of those things, like I don't necessarily have like social anxiety, but like, I definitely don't always enjoy it. And I don't really have any good reason why I've never had any traumatic moments in my life where I was like horribly publicly embarrassed or anything like that, yeah. that I would yeah. be like resistant to it. But I don't know. I just don't. And I, and I wish I did. Like, I feel like my life would be a much more richer experience if I did. So maybe I'm just going to have to like force myself to be, a little more outgoing. I'm, I'm introverted by nature. So that's yeah. part of it too, is that I, I'm like kind of saving my social energy for other things, but, uh, cause they, it does not fill me up. Yeah. But, see, and, but, but, but see that, but that's, and that, and that's the best part about you right there is that you, you know enough about yourself to know that like, you know, the best saying people saying like, you, you need to, you need to put yourself out there a little bit more. It's like, putting myself out there more, it's going to make me actually feel more uncomfortable and more, you know, and more and less like myself. Like I'd rather put myself in situations where, you know, my way, uh, my, my personal way of being uh, is effective in whatever business that it is that I'm trying to conduct. Right. And I think that you've done that. Right. Uh, even like with the podcast, right. There is still a, a barrier between you and that person. You don't have to sit right across from that person. You can end it when you want to end it. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's so many different ways in which I think that we as a people can learn to engage with each other. Um, but it, you know, we need to figure out how we best do that. Like I realize now that's the, that's a skill. Like me being able to like talk to anybody, that's a skill. Yes, it is. And, and I did, I honestly, I, you know, I can't, pinpoint when I figured it out but you know for years people would say man that's gonna take you far and I'd be like okay like you know um and I think for me personally when I when it started to resonate a little bit more was when I started seeing that projects that I was a part of projects that I was creating things that I was developing um were coming to fruition and others were recognizing it then it didn't just feel like kind of the gift of gab as they like to say in yeah New York, it felt like no like you were you 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 earned a seat at the table right um yeah. by putting in the work so 
yeah, man, go you, man. You're an awesome dude. <laughs> I just need to uh, channel my uh, inner meat, right? So yeah, there just you talk go. to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you wait, by the end of the day, I'll just be like, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> I talk to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't hate people, so I don't know. What the, I don't know what my deal is. Honestly, it's, it's just one of those things I need to get over. I'm a business owner. I need to talk to more people. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. that. But to your point, that's exactly. I think everyone does. There's so much opportunity that everyone has an opportunity to do what's in their wheelhouse of skills, right? And so I love like for you and I to have this podcast is super amazing. Like I've been looking forward to this all like all week. Like I super glad. excited about it. And so. Um, I, I look forward to this. Uh, I don't look forward to like networking groups and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, I realized like, m will I do it? Sure. Have I done it? Absolutely. Many, many times. Um, but do I love it? No. Well, let's do more of the things I love. So that's why I'm sitting here doing more podcasts because it's like at the end of the day, this is what I love. I enjoy making the connections with people. Obviously enjoyed getting to know you today. And that's really exciting to me. And so why not do more of that? We live in a world where I can create a podcast show and ask no one permission. And because of the fact that I already own these cameras, I can do it. I don't have to even do that. I could just use my computer. Um, mm -hmm. And so everyone has those opportunities and they just need to go, go get them. Go get them. Right. Yep. You can post it online for free. You can create a subscription mm -hmm. base through a Patreon if you wanted to. Like, there's no excuse for for some, like, if you want something, like, you can, it, it's it's possible for you to have it. And I know that mm -hmm. everybody's circumstances and situations are different. Um, and so I, I definitely take that into account when I say things like this, but it's there for the taking. And, you know, if, if you want it, you will do what's necessary to go get it and obviously you're doing that i'm doing that and we're doing that and that's why we're here today cool dude well thank you for having <laughs> i almost said thank you for having me, in your me. <laughs> oh man oof you know it's only two o'clock but it feels a lot later for me um well anyways thank you for being on my show i really appreciate it um it was really cool to learn about you and what you've been building and and the experience that you've had in your in your past it's really amazing so i'll be super excited to share this with you super excited for the audience to check this out and uh yeah we'll be posting content about you all over the place sooner than you think and uh, it'll be good so uh thank you very much for having or uh, thank you very much for being on the show <laughs> no thank you man i really appreciate you having me I wanna cause no problems. Mm. I just wanna live my life, but I keep on hearing about nonsense. Yeah. Me and my dons ain't mobsters, yeah. but you know when you see imposters, yeah. we know how to read them faces. Same way you know how to read them comments. If you wanna talk, let's talk. But around right here, make sure you're walking, your talk is constant. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Death to Vanilla podcast. Now, if you made it this far, I'm guessing you probably heard something that was inspiring or helpful, and we would love to hear about it. So if you could drop that information in the comments or shoot me an email, steven at burkhartcreativeagency.com. That would go a long way to helping us choose guests and create content that really bring you value. Now, Instagram is my favorite social media platform, but I'm sure you have yours. And so we encourage you to find us on your favorite platform so that you have a chance to learn more about marketing that can help you out. Now they say a rising tide rises all boats. So we ask that you would like, subscribe and follow us so that way the traffic that we get to our channel helps all the guests that have been on. Our traffic is their traffic and that helps everybody out and it's super easy to do. So if you could rate us, like us, add us, follow us, whatever you need to do to help us out, that would go a long way. So we appreciate you and hope to catch you on the next episode of the Death of Vanilla podcast.